What is up everyone, Jay here with another Fremlin Heroes video and today we're going to take a look at this year's Christmas slash winter banner, the Zappy Winter Festival. So you already know who's going to be here. Um, Yudaka makes her debut into Faye as a winter assassin, I guess. So here she is, uh, Spirited Envoy. We expected it to be her because she was on the silhouette. I definitely guessed it was her. So great art. I think this banner has great art overall. I mean, it's a winter banner. They're all very sweet and wholesome and generally don't have really any bad art in my opinion so she is a dagger cavalier and she's very strong this whole banner is pretty crazy so um here's yunaka silent yule knife i think is her weapon yeah so this gives an uh kanto three distant max three uh we've seen kanto distance before on other units i'm not sure if it's been on a range unit before i can't remember but yeah this is really good because it makes her mobility crazy and also gives her minus one cooldown at start of combat if she's alive grants plus five to all stats and grants a further bonus to units attack and speed equal to nine minus the number of allies adjacent to unit times two so this is going to help with speed creep and just outspeeding really uh speed stacking units and of course you have no follow-up you know any kind of premium range nucleus has to have no follow-up in their kit pretty much um, so yeah, you also have no guard on top of that, and also if you need an issues combat, you reduce the percentage of foes non-special reduced damage by X, so you stop spurn, close call, things like that. Um, by uh, you can reduce the damage reduction on that by percentage X times 30, and reduces damage from foes first attack by percentage X times 30 again during combat. So not only can she nuke and pierce through damage reduction, she can also have damage reduction on herself. X times 30, X equaling the number of spaces from start position to end position of whoever initiated combat, maximum three. And if any space within two spaces has a divine vein effect or counts as difficult terrain, including impassable terrain values, treated as three. And the first attack uh, means only the first strike for effects that grants units attack twice. It means the first and second strikes, which, you know, this is the new standard with uh, newer units getting damage reduction. You know, you've seen this on Brave Monster Fine and stuff. And you'll see this basically on every other unit on this banner where the X equals the amount of spaces moved whoever initiated combat so like a clash skill so yeah really strong weapon and of course you have the defense res debuff so this weapon's no joke because kind of just like with ninja sanaki who we got who can pierce through damage reduction yunaka can do the same thing and really just kill you easily and even if you don't die she can also survive because of the damage reduction she can get so silent yield knife is no joke luna is her special flared sparrow you know the new player phase uh a skill that everyone wants because you know with the divine vein flame that's the new thing it's very good assassin strike is the physical version of occultist strike which we saw on mythic Golvig, which inflicts speed defense minus four instead of res debuff so that's really good for Yunaka along with Third Sparrow because you deal 14 damage for free before you even do anything. And then Fatal Smoke 4 is cool to see because we, I mean, we just got it on the Queen of Nothingness, but now we have it on Yunaka, so that's good. So yeah, um, we also have the description here, even though these, this definitely doesn't um, explain everything <laughs> with the unit because, you know, Faye gets crazy with the descriptions. Um, at least it does help a little bit so you can get an idea of how the unit is if you're a more casual player or if you're a newbie. You know, at least I do respect them for at least putting these on here. So, yeah, that is Winter Yunaka. You know, I do like her. Yunaka's not my favorite engaged girl. I definitely like a lot of other engaged characters in general, but she's a fan favorite. Makes sense she's here. You know, she's been wanted for a long time, and she's fun to use and engage and going to be fun in Faye. So here is the next unit, Snowfall Future Edelgard. Tefish is a beautiful artist, really beautiful art. But Edelgard getting another alt, I mean, she hasn't had an alt this year, to be fair. But I guess we just couldn't go a year without uh, her getting an alt. So I guess it was bound to happen. And this time she's a lance armor compared to her last version, which was the summer one that was a sword armor. Now she's bringing a lance to the table. And she's very, very strong. Really, really strong, actually. And kind of similar to her summer version. So Black Yule Lance gives minus one cooldown to start a combat if she's alive. If unit initiates combat, applies Divine Vein Flame on five spaces in a line. So not only... Um, she's going to have Raging Storm, which we'll see later, but not only can she move again, but she also has the ability to inflict the Vine Vein Flame without having to use, uh, you know, Flared Sparrow, so that's really strong. And start a combat, if you need HP is alive, or she's alive, grants, uh, or sorry, inflicts attack defense, uh, minus X on foe, X equals the 15, minus the number of adjacent allies, times 2, minimum 6, grants special cooldown count, minus Y to unit before units first attack, so... This is similar to what Windtribe Claude had, which I'm not happy to see because Windtribe Claude is a menace. And even though Edelgard here is not a ranged unit, still, this is really, really strong because, you know, she's not just an enemy phase armor. She can also initiate and destroy you. So 
not only can she inflict the or uh sorry set up the terrain she can also accelerate her specials and just nuke you so that's really strong and of course this is based on the uh just like with yunaka where the number of spaces moved like the clash effect you'll see this in all the other weapons pretty much and um she also reduces the percentage of foes non-special so just like yunaka reduces damage reduction um, by percentage equal to 100 minus the number of allies adjacent to unit times 30. So, you know, allies, or should I say, uh, armors generally are going to have um, allies adjacent to them, at least at the start of turn, you know. Um, with this one, it's a little bit different because she has the charge effect, which you'll see. But, um, yeah, you also pierce through damage reduction, just like Yunaka, um, and also can accelerate your special. And if unit has weapon triangle advantage, or if the foe is in a space where the Divine Vein Flame is applied, you can also stop. Uh, miracle effects. So you have Fatal Smoke built in this weapon pretty much. I mean, it's a condition, but yeah, um, either you have to face a red unit or you have to have them in a space. So it's not too hard to do that. Um, so not only can you pierce through damage reduction, but you can also stop, you know, units like Brave Stella from trying to cheese. So yeah, Black Yule, or Black Yule, Black Yule Lance is really, really strong. Armored Blazes are special. Um, this is pretty much the same as Armored Beacon, except it's on foes with range equals 1. I think Armored Beacon was uh, foes with range equals 2. But pretty much everything is the same, where you boost the damage by 40% of your defense, and you also reduce damage from the foes' next attack by 40%, so that flat damage reduction. And then she comes with attack, defense prime. About time we'd see another uh, variant of the prime skill. So this is going to be really good for her because she can counterattack against everything. You just have to set her up a little bit. And then Raging Tempest is her B skill, which is just a better version of Raging Storm, of course. And it's our turn if uh, units HP is equal to 100 or if any foe is within three rows of three columns. So that's pretty easy, just like Embo's range with her uh, severance. You can move one extra space, and that is the charge status. So she doesn't have to use Assault Troop in her C slot like um, Summer Idol Guard has to do. So having charge in this skill is really strong. And if number of allies adjacent to unit is less than or equal to one, you inflict attack defense minus five on the foe during combat and you also deal damage 15% of units attack. And that's gonna hit really hard because Idol Guard does have a lot of attack, of course. And then of course, if you initiate combat, you would grant another action to unit after combat, so just like Gale Force. So you can inflict um, the terrain and you also uh, Gale Force. So yeah, she's a really, really strong unit and going to be really, really annoying to take out for sure and even tank and then defense resploy to just add on top of all the other things she can do have the support to inflict deploy status and exposure so yeah edelgard here is no joke definitely you know we just had ninja zelgius who's really strong and kind of like a lance version of summer edelgard but this one is really the lance version of summer i mean it literally is the lance version of summer edelgard because it's edelgard so yeah ninja zelgius just came out and he's still good of course but this edelgard is like next level good because she's going to work in the player phase even better so here she is moving around you can see the charge status um armored blaze is going to go hard yeah she's going to be really really strong <laughs> can't wait to fight her and then now we have dimitri winter dimitri blessed protector he is not an armor thankfully but he is a really strong axe cavalier he's kind of dimitri always gets the same ult it's always either a lance or an axe so far um <laughs> But here he is, and uh, he is definitely one of the best Axe Cavaliers. He comes with Blue blue Yule Axe, gives Kanto 2, of course, and minus 1 cooldown, and the ability to have no follow-up status, and attack speed plus 6 during combat for one turn. At the start of combat, if units HP is, or if he's alive, he grants plus X to all of his stats. Um, X equals 5 plus 15% of his speed, and you already know he's going to be fast. And he also grants special cooldown count minus Y, so just like Edelgard, he can cheat and speed up his special and just kill you <laughs> before you can do anything. So yeah, um, number of spaces move, of course, is the Y in the equation there. And then if the number of bonus effects are active on unit, excluding stat bonuses is greater than or equal to four, then the value is treated as three and you also restore seven HP after combat. So this weapon is great because it's energized well with attack speed prime, which it comes with. And then this new special, I'm not sure if this is going to be inheritable, no quarter. Um, this special basically says F you not only to, you know, damage reduction, of course, but um, it also stops, or not sorry, stops, but it also hits harder against armors. As you can see, you boost damage by X percentage of units attack, and if foe is armored, the percentage is 40, otherwise it's 30. So this is going to be good against near save tanks, so Dimitri can hit them even harder. And then even if they're not a near save tank, if they have anything like Spurn, Close Call, and whatnot, or even like Savvy Fighter, you can reduce and stop that. Um, so yeah, no quarter is no joke. I'm not sure if it's heritable. I kind of hope it is, because this would be really useful for everyone else. Um, not only Dimitri, but yeah. Attack Speed Prime is his A skill, of course. And then we come to his B skill, which is, oh my goodness, Barbarity. 
At the start of combat, if he's alive, he inflicts minus 4 to all stats except uh, res on the foe and deals damage equal to 25% of his attack. So just like with Atrocity, you know, it's reminiscent of that. And he'd also reduce damage from foes for his attack by 40%. And also, after combat, he grants vantage and dodge to himself. And also inflicts minus 6 on the target and foes within 3 spaces of target. So, Bro thinks he's Marth. He thinks he's Brave Marth or something. I'm kind of a little bit salty about this because it's like, why does he get vantage and dodge? I guess why not, right? Because Vantage is, that's Marth and Sheeta's thing. So they are the king and queen of Vantage. So I'm kind of, I'm kind of sad to see this on Dimitri. Um, obviously he has to, you know, set it up a bit, but still. Vantage on dodge of Dimitri just feels weird. Uh, but that's going to be really good for him. And then also the Omni stat uh, smoke. That's a better smoke because it's within three spaces. And then on top of that, he also has panic smoke. So not only can he give himself Vantage and dodge, he can also deal panic and full penalty doubler. He has no follow-up, everything. Like, man, this is a really, really strong... This whole banner is insane. Yeah, Barbarity is crazy. I, he just thinks he's a Marth now. I'm kind of sad about that. But, yeah. The special comes out quick whenever he clashes with a foe and ambushes foes. Um, so, yeah. Blue Yule Axe and No Quarter dealing a nuke to this Lance Knight. So, that's Winter Dimitri. Going to be insane. Everybody here is going to be insane to deal with, for sure. Um... And here he is tanking a red thief. No problem. These thieves have no attacks that anyway. So it's not like this is that impressive. But yeah, just showing he can counterattack against everything. And last but not least is Double Byleth, the Frosty Professors. I didn't expect this, but I kind of like it. Um, you know, the male and female counterpart with the male being the lead. I definitely appreciate that as a sword armor. Because I don't think we've had any of the avatars be a duo together. I don't think so. Um, this is the first, I believe. So yeah, um, really cute art. I like how uh, she's holding the Sothis plushie. And also, uh, you'll see plushies of the other three Houses of Lords in their attack art as well. So that's really adorable. But yeah, they are definitely the new best sword armor. Their weapon and kit is a reed. It's going to be hefty reed. They're absolutely insane. You thought this banner couldn't be crazy, but this unit, oh my goodness, stacked to hell. <laughs> so here they are, saving, of course, as an armor usually does. Holy Yule Blade. I really should call it holy shit blade because this weapon is stacked to <laughs> this weapon is super stacked minus one cooldown and disencounter so right off the bat you have disencounter before you even finish the rest of the paragraph so you already know this weapon stacked at the start of combat if byleth is alive grants plus five to all the stats except speed because they are a slow min maxed armor so they don't need speed and you grant bonus to units attack defense res equal to 20 percent of units res so their weapon and their whole kit is really res focused and uh, you also have no guard, and you also have the ability to uh, stop their specials. So kind of the opposite of the other units that can you know speed up their specials. You can slow down the foe specials with the scowl effect. And the scowl effect is obviously a skill, but we've seen it before on Brave Tiki, you know, Ascended Tiki, Duo Duma, and this unit can also do the same thing. Except they're not a dragon, so they have privilege of not being a dragon and having the scowl effect, which is crazy. Um, so yeah, and the special cooldown count that you inflict on them, the in-combat pulse smoke as I call it sometimes, is uh, plus X on the foe. So I think the other ones were plus 1, if I remember correctly. So this is plus X, so it can be higher than 1. So it's even better, because the X equals the number of spaces from start position to end position, just like the clash effect on the rest of the units on this banner pretty much. And if you're alive, you in the foe's range equals 2, you also neutralize effects that prevent unit counterattacks, so you can stop fire sweep effects. And this is amazing against units like... You know, Legendary Veronica, who has the Fire Sweep effect, or Duo Elise. And we've seen this before on an armor. We've seen it on Ascend of Fjorm, but obviously she's outdated and nearly not nearly as good as this Byleth. Um, but yeah, the fact that she has no counter disrupt, or the, sorry, they have no, no counter disrupt on top of this is crazy. So, really amazing tank. And then it's not, it doesn't stop there, of course. Supreme Heaven is their special, and the weapon and the special is really takes a lot of aspects of Creator Sword that regular Byleth has because. It has uh, the no guard part, it has the minus one cooldown part, obviously, and it also has ruptured sky. So this uh, special is ruptured sky plus, uh, you know, dead eye built in, basically. So <laughs> it does everything. Boost damage by X percent of units attack when special triggers, and if you're in combat against a dragon foe or beast foe, it's 50. Otherwise, it's 25. So 50 is a lot. 25 is still good, but I think this is better than ruptured sky because I think ruptured sky is only 40% at the max uh, against a dragon or beast foe. So this is even better because it's supreme, obviously. And if special triggers, you neutralize foes, reduce damage by X, so you stop close call, spurn, etc. And if foes range equals two and foes unit or foe special is ready or triggered 
before or during combat, you reduce damage from foe's next attack by 30%. And this is the flat damage reduction, I think. Just like with Edelgard's skill, you know, Armored Flow, Armored Beacon. So this weapon, or this skill, sorry, has everything. The weapon also has everything. You have Rupture Sky, you have Damage Reduction Piercing, you have Damage Reduction for yourself. Yeah, insane. Fire Flood Boost is the A skill. I kind of wish it was something else, but for Byleth here, it makes sense. Because they haven't given any other Boost 3 skills yet. I think it's only been Fire Flood Boost. But yeah, like I said, for Byleth, it makes sense because they are res focus. And then they have a new skill, web, uh, I was about to say webbing fighter. Weaving fighter, this is basically wary fighter four. Um, so it's cool to see. So the start of combat, you inflict attack defense minus four on the foe and unit and foe cannot make a follow-up attack. So this is, makes sense because Byleth here is really slow and bulky, but they want to O-code their opponents because they, they can because they have DR piercing, but um, foe can't make a follow-up attack. Obviously there is a way to stop this. You could have no follow-up, but this weapon actually has a measure a little bit of a countermeasure to no follow-up units, which are obviously common. So if the foe can make a follow-up attack, you reduce the damage by X equals 80. That being the first attack, otherwise it's 40. So even if they have no follow-up or they're faster and they have a guaranteed follow-up attack, you can still reduce it by a lot and hope to survive. So this, this fighter skill kind of helps against that. And then you also reduce damage from foe's follow-up attack by 40%. So lots of damage reduction. And uh, you also have seven HP healing. So compared to the other tier four fighter skills, you don't get you know, special charges or guard or anything, but for Byleth, it makes, it, they probably use it the best. Um, you can definitely put this on other slow armors, but you still have to compete with other fighter skills. But this is definitely really good for Byleth because they're not going to make follow-up attacks anyway. I mean, I guess you can use Ventral Fighter or something, but um, Weavy Fighter, Weaving Fighter, sorry, is really good and uh, kind of has something against no follow-up, which is really common, of course, in the metagame. And then attack resistance far safe, of course, as a standard armor would do. So yeah, this Byleth is insane really stacked i mean they can't charge their specials or cheat with their specials like uh you know edelgard and dimitri can where they can speed them up like wind trap claude but still um they can trigger their special pretty easily and supreme heaven is disgustingly good so that is winter byleth and it doesn't stop there because we haven't even gone to the dual skill grants defense res plus six reduces damage from aoe so not only did you have 80 percent damage reduction you also have 80% damage reduction against AoE, so you can pull a Goto. You have Hexblade, and you also neutralize effective against armored bonuses. So this unit does everything. It does your taxes, it does your laundry, it walks your dog, it washes your dishes. Everything that you could ever want is in this dual bio. It's insane. Um, you can see their stats right there. Really min-max, 62 attack with 18 speed, 45 defense, and 46 res. Yeah, insane. Dual skill has so many effects. We've seen stacked dual skills, of course, before in the past, but this one's definitely one of the best for Byleth because it's going to make them even more unkillable and more annoying to deal with. So, you know, and, and the fact they have DC, they don't have to run prime skills like the other, you know, like Byleth's friends there. So, yeah, taking no damage from this Green Cavalier, of course. I mean, it's not the best showcase because these, uh, these generic enemies aren't very strong, but still, yeah, Byleth's insane. So yeah, that is the Banner Holiday Lessons. Claude is missing, but uh, he is the free unit. So if you're not Claude fans, he is here. He's the freebie. And I'm kind of glad he's not on the banner because I was not ready to fa face another, you know, top tier crazy initiating Claude just like Wind Tribe alt because he just got an alt with the Wind Tribe version. So when I saw him on the silhouette, I was hoping it was someone else like Balthus or something because I do like Claude, but you know, you want to have, for me at least, I want other characters get alts. So... Claude getting another one is, you know, it's kind of cheese, but what can you do? I mean, this banner, art is great, right? But the character choices are, in my opinion, pretty lazy. They kind of just threw together the Three Houses of Lords plus Yunaka. You know, I mean, at least Yunaka's here for someone new, but yeah, I mean, in terms of strength and art, they're definitely going out with a bang for this year because they know the holidays are a time of spending, right? Because more people are going to spend money, you get more Christmas gifts and whatnot. So it makes sense, but I just wish it was more creative, but it's Three Houses, right? Um, so yeah, that's Claude and he does continue the trend of being the free unit as a bow armor. So we'll see what kind of skills he has, um, soon enough, you know, hopefully he doesn't have a crazy skill like Fallen Star or something. I mean, he might, honestly, I mean, Fallen Star is not as good as he used to be because Deep Star exists, but you know, he's not going to be nearly as crazy as his Wintry version. So thank goodness. But I guess it doesn't matter because I still have to deal with Dimitri and Edelgard who pretty much do the same thing as a melee unit. And yeah, <laughs> I'm not looking forward to facing these units. Even if uninvested, they're going to be insane to fight for sure. But you know, like plus 10 ones are going to be the bane of my existence. So I'm hoping Marth gets some kind of crazy busted alt next year, hopefully, because it's been 
it's approaching, you know, three years since he got his Brave, and that was his last alt, so crossing my fingers for an, a new crazy Marthal, but yeah, that is the banner, you know, I'm happy for my Three Houses friends, you know, that are fans of these characters, you know, getting Winter version, because I've experienced the, the hype of having your favorite get a Winter version, because, you know, I got Winter Marth several years ago, so happy for them, I just wish this banner had a little bit more creativity to it. But yeah, that is Holiday Lessons. Let me know what you guys think down below. And if you're going to be summoning on it, good luck. There are four sparks, so that's cool. If you do want to splurge on this one, just keep in mind we're getting a new year soon. And of course, the last legendary of the year. So yeah, that is the video, guys. Leave a like if you enjoyed. Please stay safe out there. Peace out.